I'm Brenda. Welcome back to my quilt room. I hope that everybody has been enjoying their summertime this year. I know I have. But when the kids go back to school, it seems like the weather starts to turn and I'm ready for fall. Today, I wanna to show you a quilt that I made and I've made this pattern a couple of times. It's really easy. It's very beginner friendly. And uh, the first one that I made was a fall quilt. And I originally saw this tutorial on the Missouri Star Quilt Company. The tutorial is called the Diamond Dash. And this is the first quilt that I made when I made that pattern. I love fall. It's really my favorite time of the year. And I had a lot of fall prints in my stash. I made that and then when I made my second one, all I have here is a picture of it. I kind of embellished it a little bit more and I put it's fall, y'all, across the top of the quilt. I appliqued the letters. Now, I don't have that quilt anymore. It was given away as a gift to someone. Out of the rest of my scraps, when I made it, I made this nice little toss pillow. These are just extra two and a half inch squares in various fall prints. I also was able to make two nice big pillow shams. Make sure I have my little scarecrow man turned up the right way. But I was able to make these really nice pillow shams. And I like to be able to decorate my bed to coordinate with my quilt a little bit. So the quilt that's behind me today is a variation of the Diamond Dash. And I called it the Curvy Diamond Dash because I saw a video where somebody did basically the same block and if, if you've been quilting for very long, you know that a lot of times quilt patterns and blocks, they can be the same block and have different names. And I believe somebody had called it the Wonder Block. And when I saw it, I thought that is so easy and it would be a way to change up the Diamond Dash and have the the dog-eared point of the two pieces of the layer cake be curvy, be a nice curvy diamond. There's a little thread I need to snip off of there. Um, so anyway, you might be asking, well, what is a layer cake? I used a layer cake. This is the layer cake that I used, and it was called Jacqueline from Connecting Threads. And a layer cake is, they usually come something like this. And there's either 40 or 42 squares in a layer cake of coordinating fabrics that all go together. And I really liked the fabrics that were in that particular pack. They looked very fallish to me. And, or you can get these charm squares Charm squares are five inch squares. So if you had a layer cake and you were making a pattern that called for charm squares, you could take a layer cake and simply cut it in half vertically and horizontally and you would have four stacks of a layer cake. Now with this one, I also purchased two charm packs to go with my layer cake. And what what I really liked about it is that in these fabrics, all you're gonna do is stack up your layer cake squares on your cutting mat. And they're, they're 10 inch squares, and I chose to use black as my accent. And what you're gonna do is just lay your ruler at the five inch, because your layer cakes are 10 inches square. And then you're going to 
slice all of them in half. And now you have stacks of stacks of your prints and your accent. Now for the accent, I had to cut 42, I had to cut 42 10 inch squares. And so you will mix your various pieces together like I did here. Just take them and mix them up. And then what you're going to do with your black accent or whatever color you choose to be your accent, you want to take that and fold that in half with the wrong sides together and your folded edge at the top. You will take your two pieces and you want to line them up. You want to line the bottom one up with a line. Take your raw open edge of your folded accent print and you want to position that around a quarter of an inch below the bottom line of your layer cake strip. So this is just about a quarter of an inch beyond the line. And you will take your second strip and you want to lay it across the bottom. Now, what you want to do, put a little pin in there at the bottom edge. You are going to sew these together with a quarter inch seam down the middle of your, this is the block, okay? And when you've sewed it, this is what it will look like. And here we have the quarter inch out of the bottom. Open it up and I just finger pressed. Now you'll take your, open up, your block will look like this. Open it up and it's really easy to do. You can feel the seam with your finger in there. And if you've pressed these, you have a nice crease line right here in the middle of your square and position it and just kind of press it out with your fingers and then you'll want to put a few pins in the bottom on the bottom edge what I did I sewed a very short seam maybe an eighth of an inch along the bottom here to hold my triangle in place. Now we've created here a bias edge and what you'll be able to do with that bias edge is you're going to be able to bend and curve. You're going to be able to put a curve in your fabric and then you'll be able to stitch that down by sewing across the bottom, it holds your triangle really nice, really nice. So you have a good place to start with your needle in and you will curve this in, put it, and I put in pins. And when you get to the top, leave your needle down and you'll have pinned a curve on this side as well and you can stitch along the edge of that curve. This is what it will look like. So I sewed across the bottom and then I peeled back, I rolled back the edge so that it was curvy on both sides and then I stitched along that edge. Now I've used a colors of thread that stand out and you would not do that with yours. You want something that would match and disappear like I've done here, these were all stitched with black thread so that you don't see, you don't see the thread. In the middle of 
each, this is a block, and that completes your block. And so I have seven blocks across and six blocks down. You don't need as many blocks down as you do across because they are longer than they are wider. And then you will turn your first row. This one has the curvies at the bottom. And then your next block, you will turn it so that they're at the top. And you'll just continue to alternate from the bottom to the top, bottom to the top, till you have made yours the width that you want it to be. Now in the middle, these strips are two and a half inches wide. And then when you line up your blocks, I marked mine with a white chalk pencil in the middle to get the seams accurate with each other. And I really like how this came out. In my fall quilt, when you, you simply snowballed a little two and a half inch square on the edges. And I really love this pattern and I've probably made five different quilts using that pattern. But when I saw that one, it just really struck me that I could do that with this and then create a larger diamond and peel back the edges to give, to give it a nice little curved look. I'm really happy with how it came out. This quilt came out to be 78 by 83 inches. So if you like that technique, there is a book that I have and it's called Peeled Back Patchwork by Annette uh, Ornelas, Ornelas, and in it, they do this technique. And there are some general instructions. I apologize, my book, it is actually falling apart. And they go through here and show you exactly the same thing that I have tried to demonstrate for you today. And then there are all kinds of patterns. So if you like this technique and you want a curved look without really having to try to piece and sew curved pieces of fabric together, they show you all different types of patterns in here that you can do this with. And some of your patterns like this one, the stars are not curved, but then these larger stars in the middle, they are curved. So if that's a technique that you think that you like, you might want to look at this book. And with this one, just like with the fall one, I ordered, when I got my uh, layer cake, I ordered two charm packs. And out of those two charm packs, I was able to make this bed runner just by leaving the charm squares, their five inch square, and I added a few fabrics out of my own stash so that I would have enough to make it four rows deep. And then I added my tan border and then the black to the outside so that I have a nice bed runner for the bottom. And out of the other charm pack, I was able to make two of these nice coordinating pillow shams. Now these are the charm pack cut into two and a half inch squares. And again, I did add a few fabrics, a few five inch squares that I had that I thought my colors blended with these to make the pillow shams. So I actually made this whole quilt top in probably two afternoons. It's a very simple, very quick pattern, especially if you have fabrics that you just really like and you don't want to cut them up into a whole bunch of little tiny pieces and sew them back together. 
it's not too early when fall gets here to start thinking about what am I going to do for Christmas. And you might have somebody special on your list that you want to make a really nice gift for. And you could literally do this in a weekend. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video and that if you like my videos, you would give me a thumbs up and subscribe. So until next time, we'll see ya.